Hello everyone, welcome back to Design Fusion Tutorials. I'm Sahil Daswani, an application specialist at Design Fusion, and in today's tutorial, I'll show you how to set up Moodle analysis in Sim Central 3D. Before we begin, it's important to understand why we perform this analysis. Well, Moodle analysis helps us in figuring out the natural frequencies of an object or a part, and we typically want to avoid these frequencies as it excites the body and causes unwanted high amplitude vibrations. Now that we understand why we need to perform this analysis, without any further ado, let's dive right in. Well, as you can see, I've got a mid surface of a car bumper in front of me, and this will be our focal point for today's analysis. Now let's create our simulation and FEM file, and then we'll move on to setting up the solution. One of the advantages of SimCenter is that when you select the solution type, it automatically selects the basic output requests that are needed. Since we are performing modal analysis, I selected solution 103 real eigenvalues to find out the different modes of vibration and as you can see, the displacement parameters are already enabled. Now one more thing that I really like about SimCenter is this preview button. It displays what output data is being requested instead of me cycling through each instance and check if it's enabled or not. Additionally, we can also define frequency ranges and the number of modes depending upon the requirement and this can be done in both the solution and solution step. The sub steps allow you to create multiple cases with different parameters or values under a single solution. So now that the basic parameters are done, let's move on to meshing. Given that we are dealing with a sheet body, a 2D mesh is in order. I'm defining the mesh by using automatic element size as it will recognize the dimensions of the body and suggest a value that will be ideal for the mesh. Next, we want to assign a material and a thickness to the sheet body. I'm choosing a thermoplastic material from the inbuilt material library. If you want, you could also create a new material with different material properties if you wish. Now, there are functionalities that exist in SimCenter which act as verification steps to ensure if all parameters are set as they should be. Like checking if the thickness of the body is uniform throughout or not. Now, with meshing complete, let's move on to the final pre-processing step that is defining constraints. Bumpers are usually attached using fasteners unless you have a unibody and since fasteners have zero degrees of freedom, I'm going to use fixed constraints here. As you can see, I've got these small circular faces on the car bumper and these are going to act like fasteners for me. I'm also going to restrict the bumper's motion to X and Z axis using another constraint called simply supported constraint. I'm going to constrain the thin strip that is around the border of the body. And I'm doing this because the bumpers are usually attached to the car using brackets and fasteners and would have little to no free motion in that direction. Now, SimCenter also allows you to change the visualization of the constraint or force parameters so you can adjust it based on your preference. Now you can also hide constraints if you prefer it that way. Now that our model is prepped, let's go ahead and run the solution. The solution generally opens up three new windows, analysis job monitor, an information window, and a solution monitor. The solution monitor gives you the real-time information of the solver as we can see here, the eigenvalues are being calculated. The analysis job monitor and information window give you a quick preview on summary of any issues or warning during the analysis. Moving on to the final stage that is post-processing. Let's load the result and observe how the bumper behaves under different frequencies. I'm reducing the deformation scale and changing the view from mesh to polygon edge for a clear visualization. You can also animate the full cycle to visualize each mode. Now, in the post-processing navigator, as you can see, we have 10 different modes listed with their corresponding frequency values. And these frequencies are the natural frequencies of the bumper. And this is how quickly you can perform a modal analysis in SimCenter 3D. Thank you for joining me for this tutorial. If you found this helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more tech insights. Until next time, happy analyzing.